All right. Hello, wine drinking people. Today is Wednesday, February 16th. Had a great dinner last night with TJ Peabody of Craigie Range. And uh, we got back to our normal schedule here of two events per week. I think uh, last week I was out like seven, had seven events. I was out six nights. So it's getting a little crazy there. But two events, uh, planned events, actually, that you guys can come to is about what we like to be at here. I think I'm actually out four nights the next couple of weeks. But uh, we've got a lot of great stuff coming in here. All right, well, what have I got to sell you today? Well, today I just came across an incredible value from Spain, which Spain, once known as the Sleeping Giant, because there were so many great vineyards here and under the impression that this country saw from its previous ruler, Franco, you um, <clears throat> didn't see any good wines coming into Spain. So therefore, the local, they were just drinking the local wine and there was no wine going out of Spain. Therefore, no competition and um, not really great wines before 1970 made in Spain for the most part. But after that, the quality revolution and what we're seeing today, <laughs> some of these areas like Toro, which is just to the south and to the west of Ribeiro del Duero, uh, is um, you're seeing some of the greatest old vine Tempranillo, well, Tinto de Toro, which is a clone of Tempranillo. And if you look at Tinto de Toro, that's the darkest of all the Tempranillos, really almost uh, purple, opaque in color, and uh, very difficult to see through a glass of uh, wine like the Fighting Bulls, the best wine from this Louis and Williams winery. A new project and uh, making some very good wines from some very old vines here. The first wine that we brought into the store, the Fighting Bulls which uh, is uh, from 100-year-old plus vines and uh, all aged in small French barrique and a very intense bouquet here, raw, venison-y, kind of gamey notes with incense, black spices, leather, and a ton of black cherry liqueur-like fruit showing there. Uh, and then lovely concentration on the palate. But when this wine finishes, even though it's got all this densely packed fruit and spice and everything else, man, your tongue is just fresh really easy to take down a whole bottle of this Fighting Bulls. All right, and then the Crianza, which, hey, both of these wines are labeled Crianza. You know, the new trend in Spain today is really focusing on the vineyard and making, you know, a top-level wine, uh, insignia-type wine like Fighting Bulls here and just labeling it the regular Crianza where you can age it for whatever time you want in oak. It doesn't have to be, you know, Reserva, for instance, is aged one year in oak and one year in the bottle. And Grand Reserva, two years in oak, three years in the bottle, released on its fifth year. Well, a lot of people have abandoned those titles and just put Crianza on their top level wines like this Fighting Bulls. So it's a little confusing, this William Crianza, kind of the same classification. But this is um, kind of their mid-tiered wine. It's aged for 13 months in oak and 40-year-old vines. So instead of 100-year-old wines, you still have some very old plant material going into this. 40-year-old vines, well, most of the first groves in Bordeaux and the other great properties in the world will not put, you know, their young vines into their top cuvées. Young vines usually means 25 years or younger, so 40 still being very old here. Uh, lovely fresh piled earth, some soy in that, new leather saddle, and a lot of that wild strawberry and dark cherry fruit here showing up on the nose as well, and uh, brown spices. Lovely concentration on the palate, obviously not quite as big as the Fighting Bulls, but uh, still has got lovely balance and freshness on the finish. And uh, the wines of Toro date back for a long time, although they're you know just coming onto the scene now. The most famous winery, Numantia, just about a little over 10 years old, 1998 being the first vintage there. But uh, like I said, the history goes back a long way, and the wines of Toro uh, have been around since before the Romans. So some great stuff there. Check it out on today's email. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.